Today I'm going to show you the easiest way to develop a flavor, and it's also the cheapest, and probably the most convenient for most people starting out developing a flavor for, in this case, any type of beverage. So let me show you how to do it. I'm Darce O'Neill, and this is Art of Drink. Now when I speak about flavor, we're mostly talking about aroma profile today. So there is the flavor element, the sweet, the sour, the salty, the bitter that we taste on our tongue. And then there's this whole concept of taste, which is the combination of what we feel on our tongue and the aroma profile we get from our nose. Today, this is specifically focusing on the aroma profile. That's where most flavor comes from. To do it, it we're just gonna steal information from the perfumer's world. It's also how they do it when you're prototyping a flavor. And we're just going to smell our chemicals here. Actually, these ones here. And we just can't smell them at 100% because it's too intense. We don't actually get an accurate representation of the smell that you would normally get in the parts per million. So whether it's 10 or 50 parts per million level, uh, we need to get closer to that to actually get an accurate representation. And then we're gonna smell it on one of these scent strips. Now you can get different varieties of them. I personally like these little round ones here because you can actually write what's on it. Now these ones are good for smelling perfume. They're the ones you usually get, you know, when you're walking through a mall and there's somebody dealing with perfume, hand doing it out. They work, but I do like the rounded ones. And you can also buy these books. So they just come in pre-cut books and you just rip them out and then you dip the end in. If you can find the rounded ones, they will help if you're doing a lot of work because you can actually just write on them. But the most important part today is diluting down our concentrates. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take a vial and you're gonna add alcohol. Now you don't need to use store-bought alcohol. You can use perfumer's grade alcohol. So perfumer's alcohol usually has some denaturing element, whether it's a bitter compound or something else that makes it unpalatable. And then that obviously gets re reduces the taxes significantly. So it's often much cheaper. It's widely available. And the reason we can use it is because when we're doing our smelling, we're never going to taste this. In fact, we're going to let most of the alcohol dry off these strips before we start smelling it. But the idea with the alcohol is that it does, it's a good dispersant or a good solvent, and it will actually help us dilute things down to that 1% or 0.1% that we're looking for. It also keeps things in solution and it helps preserve certain things. So like orange oils tend to do better in uh, alcohol than on their own because they don't oxidize as much. But if you can find, you can usually buy it online. You don't have to go to a special store. If you don't have access to ethanol, you can use isopropyl alcohol, the stuff you buy at the pharmacy. Again, it's 99% is the preferred one. As little water in it as possible. And you can use that, but it does have a distinct aroma. So you do have to let it dry off your strips when you're tasting it. So you don't actually get that aroma of IPA in it. You can let these sit around or just wave them in the air for a bit and that will get rid of most of the alcohol. And you still want to do that with the ethanol as well. It, the ethanol is not quite as bad as the IPA when it comes to aroma. But the idea is just to get a small amount of your flavor compound or your essential oil on here, and then, then you can smell it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine these. Kind of cool to smell one compound, but if you're actually doing flavor development, what you're gonna end up doing is layering these like this. You know, get it symmetrical and then you're gonna smell it. And that's gonna be your three compounds or four compounds or five compounds. And as you're smelling that, that's gonna give you an idea of what you're going to end up with. So if we were to do this with full concentration, far too intense. But let me show you the easy way to dilute this. And again, we're just gonna use our alcohol. And these are 15 mil vials. So let me get a pipette here. So that's 15 mils of alcohol into here. And then what I'm gonna do is add four drops. So this one's cognac oil, and it's a distillate from grape, or the grape lees, or the, the yeast that happens after distillation or fermentation. They basically distill it and you get, uh, there's a lot of ethyl heptanoate in there, which is an ester. 
but you only want a small amount and it smells wonderful. It's got kind of a whiny cognac brandy flavor. So I just put four drops. If you get five drops in, that's fine. Even six drops. You can make it what you want, but one drop in the metric world is technically 1 20th of a milliliter or uh, 50 milligrams of water. But because this is an organic solvent, there's the density factor. So it equates about 40 milligrams of cognac oil going in here per drop. So four drops is 160 milligrams roughly, which makes it a 1% solution. So 150 milligrams in 15 mils is a 1% solution. 1.5 mils of cognac in this, or cognac oil into your alcohol, would be a 10% solution. But the idea is closer to 1% is better because you're typically going to use this in 20, 30, 40, 50 parts per million in your final drink. So when you're smelling it, obviously, it's gonna be a little more concentrated than in your drink, but it's gonna be way better than smelling this concentrated. So then what you're going to do, so you're just going to take your test strip. If you're doing a bunch of these, it really does help to kind of make a note of what those are. So uh, cognac oil, I just use CO. You can, for vanilla, you can use you know VAN or whatever. But then what you're going to do is you're going to dip the tip in, and then you're just going to let it dry for a bit. And you're never going to drink this. You're never going to use it in a formulation. This is simply for making prototyping formulas or flavors that you want to work with. I do recommend getting little labels so you can label these because these will last, you know, a year, maybe longer. And so you can constantly use them. And then once you have your flavors, I just have a thermal printer that prints them out, print them small, and they work really well. So you can get them on the bottle like this. And then that way you can keep track of things and you can keep everything in a bin. You can have your concentrates here and then you can have your diluted ones in a separate one. I most importantly put the concentration, so 1% in alcohol or ETOH was the short form, ethyl alcohol. And then I also put the date that I made it. And some people can put the company you got it from. There is some variation between companies in flavor profiles. Some aim for a pure level, some aim for more you know, robust flavor. But if, if you put the company that you used it on, you'll, uh, it will serve you better in the future. If you ever stumble across a magic formula that you really need to reproduce, having that information is going to make it much easier. That smells... Good, and you know, it, it's definitely not as strong as this, and you'll get more of an understanding. It is definitely more cognac-like. But if we're to take another one, so I'm gonna do dihydrocumarin on this one, so just let me uh, put some alcohol in here. So this is dihydrocumarin. It's not coumarin. This is a modified molecule that does not have the same blood thinning properties as coumarin, so it's kind of neat to use. And you can just basically take, again, four drops of this. Give that a quick shake. And now you have your kind of vanilla-esque aroma. And then again, you will write your notes on your stick. You can write it along the, this part. And then you're going to dip it in. And it actually smells better at that level than the concentrate. Sometimes concentrates can have a, just be too intense for you to get an accurate representation. But now this is where the formulation part comes in. So what you're going to do, I know I'm doing this quicker, you can let these sit for five minutes. The, uh, the aroma will not disappear. But because of this video, we're just going to do it a little quicker. But the combination of that, that's kind of like a vanilla, vanilla cognac and I really like that and it's kind of this unique combination that it does remind me of a vanilla cognac I had probably 10 20 years ago 
but it's got more of a, a green smell to it. But it's still got the, the, the coumarin part, and it's got the cognac part, but the combination adds something. There's synergy in that. And technically, you don't want the tips to touch. You don't want cross-contamination. You know, you think you need to add some Delta Deca Lactone, which is kind of a, a whiskey element. Not quite whiskey lactone, but very similar. It has a, a coconut aroma to it. That may actually work well with the coumarin in this. And then, uh, yeah, and so what happens is you just keep doing this until you come up with something that you like. It's the, almost the exact same thing as making perfume. And with perfumers, they can kind of just stop, mix their stuff in alcohol, make sure they meet regulations, and then sell it. For us, we have a lot more steps to do. Again, calculating the amount that you can ingest and figuring out how to make that emulsified and getting it into a syrup, which just goes into a beverage. That stuff I'm working my way through to show you all. But just remember that as you're doing this, oops, kind of cross-contaminated there, but that's okay, because it's a video. But you'll find that if you don't like that, you can use something like isobutavan, which is a vanilla-esque aroma. So not quite vanilla, but not quite coumarin. And again, we're using dihydrocoumarin here, much different than coumarin. Well, not much different, but different than coumarin in that it is FEMA grass, so you can use it in food, but it's not going to have the same toxic effects that actual true coumarin has. So, but there are other vanilla compounds like isobutavan that may work better. And then what you do is you just make your isobutavan dilution. And again, you're not gonna go through an, uh, you know, 150 mil bottle of alcohol is going to make you 10 of these solutions. And then, you know, usually buy it in 500 mils. So that's gonna make 30, you know, 32 of these. So I can pretty much do this with a few dollars of pharmacy alcohol or perfumer's alcohol if you wanna be really accurate. And I could pretty much do all of these. You can buy you know, you know, your vials for, you know, they're like 25 or 30 cents a piece, depending on where you get them and how many you buy. But you can just get them online. I use 15 mils because I like the small size of them. So if you've ever studied math and you've learned about combinations, 30 different flavor combinations can basically result in an almost infinite number of combinations for aroma profile. And honestly, there's gotta be, you know, we've all tasted orange soda, cream soda, Coke and root beer. And sure, it's fun to drink those and make those, but there's gotta be better stuff out there. And especially in the cocktail world, like working with a lot of the compounds in the cocktail world can make some pretty fantastic beverages if you took this science element and flavor development and started working that into drinks. But yeah, as this gets older, and most of the alcohol is gone, you get a, you know, a deeper, richer kind of aroma, and I quite like it. I'm not sure it would work in a drink, but possibly. I'd probably change out the dihydrocoumarin for something like isobutavan in this one. But I could add a third compound, or a fourth compound, or a tenth compound. Perfumers often just do like 20 compounds. You'll see this the bench full of different things and each one's adding a different component. You can get to that level with flavors. But for starters, I recommend keeping it under five and working to get to a level that really is refined because that's what people want. And again, it depends on your target market. If you're targeting kids with a new type of soda, you know, that's a different flavor profile. I tend to work more towards bartenders and cocktails and, you know, even trying to work non-alcoholic cocktails using these ingredients to make things taste like a cocktail. That's kind of probably my long-term goal. As for taking this and turning it into a beverage, that will be coming down the pipe. Do check out my Patreon page. That's where a lot of the formulation stuff and the calculators get put because, you know, I can't do it on YouTube, so uh, check out Patreon if you're interested in supporting further development of this. It is very much appreciated. If you have any questions, let me know. I do answer more complex ones over on Patreon, but if you have a general question and I think everybody should know the answer, I'll answer it down below. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.